Hi, I'm Logan White. Now, Mr. Landrum, this might not be what you're looking for. Uh, my three long videos, no clue what I want to do. So I just, I figure, I just recall, like, my high school experience. I Meaning I'm in grade 12, it's about my final year of school. I'll be graduating. So I'm just going to go through, like, what happened through high school, what my experience was for it. Um, really how I would start it, though, is with junior high. Because for the first six years, from K to six, you're in this small elementary school. Like, you knew who everybody was. I had no friends in elementary school. Like, I, I was in hag school. About halfway through grade four, we ended up moving, and so I had to go to a different elementary school. I had maybe one, two friends there, but they found their own people to hang out with, so I was alone. Um, so I was just kind of left to myself. I did my own thing. Tried to make friends best I could, but it didn't turn out too well. Grade six, I started to develop depression because I had no friends. Like, I didn't think anybody liked me, so I started to fall into a depression. Elementary school, like, it was all right. It was easy. You learned, you learned enough. They started teaching you about how to unlock a lock because you're moving to the junior high and you're going to have a lock and a locker. So you got a space to put all your stuff. But I was scared. Like, I was just scared because I was moving to a different school. I knew I had no friends. I wasn't a very sociable guy. I mean, I'd put myself out there, but not really the best of me. I didn't start making friends until, uh, like, new kids started to move to the school. Because, uh, one of my buddies, Brad, moved from, uh, BC. And so I would always take it upon myself to, uh, like, introduce the new kids to the new school and the town and whatnot. So that's how I gained a friendship with Brad. Just a little bit through grade seven, I started to make some more friends. I found some old friends of mine from uh, Hag School. And uh, we still hit it off. I mean, we became best friends. We're still friends today. And that was all right, grade eight, you know, the transitional period. And then uh, grade grade nine, like that was, that was a pretty hard time for me. I mean, I didn't like the school. I didn't like the school system. Just pretty much from uh, kindergarten to grade nine, you can just sit there and do nothing. The school system is just broken. You can just sit there and do nothing and you can make it to the high school. But grade nine, I really, really made enemies with a lot of teachers. My math teacher, I'd fight with her a lot. Uh, teacher aid in my, my class, I'd, <laughs> I, I made her really mad at me. After you're in grade nine, because you feel like kings, you're the top of the school. You're at the very peak of the school. Like you, like everyone, grade eight, grade seven, they look up to you because you've been there longer. But then the fear that you had from moving to elementary school to the junior high comes back when you go from junior high to high school because it's bigger, scarier, and harder. Most of the things you learn in school aren't really gonna apply later in life. And by that, I mean, like, in math, like, angles, I don't really want to do anything that really applies to that. In high school, you learn a lot of things in math and other classes that prepare you for college or university. But if you don't want to go there, you're, you're screwed. Because they don't teach you how to do taxes. They don't teach you about the real world. They don't teach you the struggles of getting a job and trying to keep your head above water. Instead, they teach you how to measure angles, and they teach you fractions, which can be useful, but not all the time. They teach you how to use graphs, and then they recycle all that for the next year, and then the year after that. They say that your high school years, like, they're supposed to be the best years of your life. But they don't tell you they're the best years of your life if you make it that way. 
I made it that way just by giving myself some interesting stories to tell later in life. Grade 10, basically grade 7 all over again. Bigger school, same lockers, different lock combination, but moving to different classes every, all day, every day. Grade 11 came around and uh, grade 11 was interesting. I'm not going to deny it from my past. I'm not going to deny it to anyone. I did get in a lot of trouble. I mean, like, I got suspended for eight days for being in possession of marijuana. I mean, I'm not going to hide that from my family. I'm not going to, I can't hide that from anyone. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of my past. So that happened. I mean, whatever. Didn't get arrested. Didn't get charged. Second semester. Ooh. Oh, boy. Second semester the principal, vice principal, some of the supervisors, they deny this because they don't want to look bad. They don't want to say that they're picking on us or targeting anyone. But they targeted me and my friends. On their hit list, it went me, subsidiaries, being my friends, and then all the other guys that always get called to the office. Because of one thing where I got suspended for eight days for marijuana, they decided that I was the bad egg. That I couldn't do anything, like I, I couldn't shape up. So what'd they do? Well, because we didn't have a cafeteria, we were seated in the hallways. The one near the science wing. Seated tables, just lined down the hallways with chairs. If you ever been in a bar or a cafe where everyone's talking and you have to talk over the noise, it's gonna get loud. Now the office claimed that my group was the only loud ones and nobody else was loud, that they could walk down the hallway and no one was loud. That is not true. It was always loud. Sure, there were complaints, but that's not the school's fault because they couldn't really put us anywhere else. The gym was in use during lunch periods, so they couldn't, they couldn't put us in the gym to eat. So it was loud. I get that. But they can't say that it was just me and my group of friends. So... After we were called loud, of course you can't shapen that up. We still sat in the hallways, we still talked, we still tried to talk over the noise so we could hear each other. And of course when we laugh, it's the deep belly laugh, it's nice and loud. But then after a while of them telling us to be quiet because we're the loud, loudest ones in the group, I got a little mad of how they were treating us, singling us out. I opened my mouth and got sent to the office. They don't like to be challenged. Their authority can't be challenged. They think they're untouchable. Most people won't agree with me in saying that I think the school system is corrupt. Most people will. Because the way I see it is that they bullied me. Worse than anyone else has, they bullied me in a school that teaches anti-bullying. <laughs> they bullied me by sitting me in the office telling me that my group was the only one that was loud, were the only ones that can be heard. And then I get suspended from lunch. It's the middle of winter, and that was a really cold winter, like minus 40 below almost every day, if not worse. I was not allowed in the school or around the property. I was supposed to eat outside or at home. And I'm a poor kid, so I don't really have the money to drive back and forth from school every lunch to eat. So me and my group of friends, we would huddle outside. I'd eat my lunch, we'd go to Sev. We always went to Sev. And then, after a while, we got sick and tired of having to wait for me outside for the bell to ring. So, after a while, we'd go outside, I'd eat my lunch, we'd sneak back in, right through sea door right in front of all the teachers. I would have somebody in front of me, two people to the side of me, to turtle me so that they couldn't see me. We'd sneak me down to a hallway that no teacher goes down. The gym doors, and where the student parking lot is, no teacher ever goes down that way. I've only seen like maybe two, two teachers. Yeah, only two teachers use that door. You, Mr. Landrum, and some other teacher. That one other female teacher, she didn't really care that I was there because she didn't really know that I wasn't supposed to be there. Mr. Landrum, he was pretty cool. 
He knew I was there, wasn't going to boot me out. That's okay in my books. I like him. After like maybe two, three months of that, and my dad getting equally mad as me, and uh, calling the office quite a few times to voice his opinion and then having a meeting with them, I finally got given back my lunch. I was allowed to sit back in the school and eat. But we still sat over by the gym because we didn't want to be singled out anymore. So we singled ourselves out and made sure we wouldn't get in trouble. And then, another time while I was eating in that hallway, natural body function. Everyone does it, and if you don't, you can cause some serious damage to yourself. I farted. It was loud. Everyone could hear it. And it was funny. All my friends, I sat there, I farted, they all moved away. One of the teacher aides, like one of the, one of the uh, supervisors comes around, stands about a good ten feet away from me because it stunk, and yelled at me asking how old I was. I got sent to the office for a fart. I got sent to the office for farting. They told me I had to excuse myself to the bathroom to go and fart. To which I told them, no, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I can't suppress a natural body function. If I do that, it's going to cause irreparable damage. They're not a fan of smart asses either. Not a fan of the office. Not a fan that they can bully their students. Teachers, the teachers in the school, they're all right. I like a handful of them. I don't like a bunch of them. Mr. Glassby, he's fun. Mr. Landrum, I mean, he's lenient. He's disciplinary, but he's fun, for the most part. The office, I'm not too big a fan of them. This is all because of me in grade 11 for having marijuana in my locker. For getting suspended for eight days, I made it to the top of their hit list, and then all my friends were underneath me. Because school is corrupt. As far as grade 12, it's not quite over. Not sure what false allegations I'll get caught up into with the office. What kind of trouble I'll get into. But I know for sure that I'm going to graduate. One thing they always ask us is, what do we want to do with our lives? Some people know, about 5% of them. The other 95%, they don't know. I've been asked many times what I want to do with my future. And over the years, it's changed. I've wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to be a physicist. I've wanted to be an actor, a filmmaker. A director. My girlfriend brought it up. I've wanted to be a rancher. So what do I want to do with my life? I don't know. No one knows. The school shouldn't have to pressure us to get us to tell them what we want to do. When most of us don't know. We don't know if we want to go to college or university. We don't know if we're just going to go out and get a job. We don't know if we want to have a career. We just know that we're going to live our lives. That's most of my school experience so far. Being scared. Being depressed. Being bullied by head office. Being suspended. And not knowing about my future. Thanks for watching.